What's up y'all? Preston Smiles here from the beautiful Venice Beach, California and today's transmission is the four ways that we subconsciously block our success. Now the first mindset way in which we block our success and this is a really big one and guys I want you to stick in for all four because they're all really really big and they will make a big difference in your life if you really recognize this because the first steps to change is awareness we become aware of what needs to shift and then we begin to accept what is and then we step into what what needs to change and so the first way in which a lot of people I will not lie I have been a part of this block our success is a fear of abandonment or disloyalty and what I mean by that is some of us feel like if we become successful, right? And this is all subconscious. This is not a logical cognitive thought. This is stuff that's happening way below the surface. But what happens is, is if we come from humble beginnings, or if we have a best friend that we said we would make it with, and that's what happened with me. My best friend Brown Andrews and I both wanted to be actors. And there was a part of me when I would be auditioning and doing things that felt like I couldn't make it without him. And so what ha tends to happen is, is if we experience ourselves coming from humble beginnings, there's an idea that if we become successful, we will then leave our friends and our family behind and we will abandon them. And so what tends to happen is, is, is that we subconsciously sabotage our way back to what uh, would be referred to as homeostasis. And homeostasis is that part of the body that is the equilibrium. We sabotage ourselves back to the level of good that we think is okay to experience. An example of that would be you meet a guy or you meet a girl who's amazing, but you have a best friend who's single and really is having a hard time meeting someone. And so out of a fear of abandonment and disloyalty to your friend, you start to look for reasons and ways in which this guy and this thing doesn't work for you. And so you sabotage yourself back down to homeostasis, back down to the same level as your friend. Way number two that we sabotage ourselves and our success is this idea that mo money, mo problems. I'm not sure you guys have ever heard that, but there's an actual collective consciousness that says that if I have more money, if I have more success, then there'll be more demand on me. More people asking me for stuff, more responsibility, more stuff to do. And so what we tend to do is we sabotage ourselves back down to what's comfortable so that we don't have to deal with the demands of success. Now, is any of this stuff true? No, not true with a capital T. Is it true that yes, we have more responsibilities at times? Of course we do. That doesn't make the other statement true and guys by the way if any of this is resonating with you as I speak this please go in the comments right now and drop any stories or any ways in which you can relate to this stuff because I think it's a big deal as a community that we talk about these things so by the way if you guys see baby Kingston in here hi my bubs are you awake is a nugget awake way number three in which we sabotage our success is there's some part of us that believes that we are fundamentally flawed that there is something wrong with us and that there's no possible way that I can actually have what I say I want. There's got to be, there's something wrong with me and or, or something I've done in the past that will for sure, for sure block that. Now, I'm going to take a little caveat here because I want to tell you guys about my position on karma. I believe that karma is instant and it is done unto us as we believe. So the idea of karma being this thing that is fixed, that you do a thing in 1989 and in 1999 you're still paying for it. I don't believe that at all. However, I do believe in the power of the mind. And so if you believe that you need to be punished, that you are fundamentally flawed because you didn't stop somebody from doing something, at a party when you saw something or whatever the case may be right we've all been through a lot of stuff and I don't want to go too deep at this very moment but you know what I mean if you believe that you are fundamentally flawed then you will block your success you will find a way no matter how good it gets to bring yourself back to what you believe you deserve this I have seen a thousand times in my clients uh, I've seen it in man cave with the men that I work with and it's really a big deal guys so if that's one for you I, I, I really want to stress that you're not you're not fundamentally flawed everything on this planet is intended here and whatever God 
or uh, entity you believe in did not make a mistake. For me, God makes no mistakes. You are an on purpose with many purposes. That's with an S, not just one. And so we get caught up in the idea that we have to have one purpose. And if we don't do well in that purpose, then we must be terrible and bad and all of those things. You have many purposes on this planet and you are a beautiful human being. And there's a part of each and every one of us that has never been hurt, harmed, or in danger. There's a part of you that is still pure, that is still innocent, that still only knows love. And I remind you to reach towards that on a daily basis, to ask yourself if my higher self was living this moment, if my higher self was making this decision, what decision would I make? Way number four in which we sabotage our success is a fear of outshining. For those of you who grew up with siblings or somebody really close to you, if you ever had a moment where your mom or your dad gave you even just a look for doing so well that it makes your brother or sister look bad, then you may have this subconscious thing happening inside of you where every time you start to do really good, you bring it back down. You see, the body is a living library and it remembers all and stores all the traumas, everything you've ever been through, it stores it. And our biggest mental maps of the world are formed between the ages of zero and seven years old. And so if between those times you experienced any type of programming that would have you believe that if you outshined your brother or your sister or your cousin or anybody, even your mom, even your dad, even if you won the spelling bee and your dad couldn't spell it, and that what came up for you was this, oh, I made daddy mad or sad, then you may be sabotaging your success. Beautiful family, I couldn't be more grateful for each and every one of you. If you receive value from this video, I ask two things. One, I ask you to leave a comment below and tell me what resonated the most or what came up for you or which one you're still working through. And two, I ask that you share it with somebody or somebodies because the only way my message gets out is through you. Blessings and blessings from the beautiful Venice Beach, California. I am, we are, hashtag loves voices going down in a beautiful major way. Live love, give love.